viewers, it is I, Drehan, and I am online. As you just heard, that was my new little intro piece. Shatter Me by, what was it, Lindsay Sterling? I believe. Yeah. Anyways, welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons Character Conversion. If you are new to my character conversion, I take characters from different works of fiction, such as games, movies, TV shows, or even books. Last time, I worked on two characters from the Kid Icarus franchise, Pit and Dark Pit. And before that was my first character conversion, Legend of Zelda's Link. Now, I did get quite a few views. I've only gotten two comments on it. But, at least I had some views on it. Kid Icarus has yet to get any views. So, I will leave a link in the description for those last two videos. And now, there is something I did not do in the last two videos. And that was make Link Pit and Dark Pit characters that you are able to fight against. That is what I will be doing in this video. As you can probably tell from the title, I will be doing a conversion on the Legend of Zelda's Ganondorf and Ganon. The antagonist of the series. Now, I do not know much about these two characters, so I had to look them up, like I did with Pit, Dark Pit, and Link. Now, let's start with the most difficult one. And that is converting Ganondorf into a playable character. Give me a quick second to get him on my search engine. That way I can go over him there. Now, most of the newer pictures depict Ganondorf with a type of sword. Either a long sword or a great sword by the look of it. However, he also knows a great deal of spells. This is a small issue, because I could not find the right class for him, so he can have his sword fighting abilities and have a number of spells that he would be depicted with in the games. Like I said, I don't know much. So, I am going to look some spells up, the uh, spell lists up real quick, while I go over what Ganondorf would most likely be. Now, as far as his race goes, Ganondorf is, has dark skin, according to the games. Now, like I did with Link, he's going to be an elf. However... Since Ganondorf does have darker skin, he's going to be a dark elf, as shown here in Subrace. Now, why I did that is because his Gerudo closely resembles the elves, but they are technically darker, and they have different... different... Different ways of living. So I'm just going to have him as a dark elf. <clears throat> For his background. Now, background is a little trickier. I actually wasn't too sure about this one. But then I thought that since he's a Gerudo... Most of the Grudos are warrior women. 
why not tribe? So, I kept thinking, did a little more research. I think the most suitable would be Barbarian Tribe member. That does not mean that Gerudo, that uh, Gandorf is going to be a Barbarian. No. He needs spells. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I see. That could work. That actually fits in with the lore, actually. Alright. Looks like we found a winner. For Ganondorf's class. We are giving him... The Warlock class. Yes, the Warlock class. He is a Warlock Barbarian Tribe member, Dark Elf. Because some of the spells actually fit in quite well. Alright, here we are. Now we're getting a little more interesting. Okay, this is actually a good start. So I'm actually going to keep this... But, I'm going to move Charisma up. I'm going to move Dexterity down. Wisdom up here. Constitution needs to be the strongest. No. I'll make it the second strongest. That way Charisma is the strongest. There. Dexterity will be the lowest. Good. Alright, here we are. So, we want Arcana on Intimidation. No, not Investigation. Intimidation. There we are. Alright, now our Warlock Archetype. Obviously, we're going with a Fiend. Okay, hit dice is good. Hit points are good. 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 Alright, now his equipment. Okay, this is going to be trickier. Alright, we want the arcane focus. That's not going to be too difficult, I suppose. Because one of his pictures actually does show him with daggers. Which we're already getting. So, actually... Yeah, we'll go with another one. Get another dagger in there. For this one, I think we'll do an unarmed strike. There we are. Yes, Barbarian Tribe member. This is Ganon... Dwarf. You know what? For copyright reasons, let's call him Ganon Dwarf. <laughs> Not funny? Yeah, that wasn't funny. Ganon Dwarf. Alright, so, if we go over to here, you'll see why I did some of the things. I might actually be surprised with some of these. Alright, so the elf features, he'll get his dark vision, basically. He's immune to being charmed. He's immune to a magical sleep, which makes perfect sense. Perception proficiency. Now, he does have a disadvantage while in direct sunlight. That's the only problem with being a dark elf. He does get some certain spells right off the bat. He's proficient in rapier, sword, short swords, and crossbow. Okay, Barbarian Tribe member feature. You can forage for twice as much food and water while in the wilderness and have knowledge of Barbarian lands. That's pretty reasonable. 
Warlock features. Spell Burning Hands and Command are added to your Warlock spell list for you. So that's pretty good. You gain a Charisma Modifier plus your Warlock level temporary HP when you reduce a creature to 0 HP. Now that's pretty good. Okay, armor proficiencies, light armor. Unfortunately, for now. Weapon proficiencies, tool proficiencies. Now you do get two extra languages here. Now what I would recommend, since this is Ganondorf, and he is part of the Legend of Zelda franchise, I would go with Fey. And... Infernal. Just because. Alright, what else do we have? Let's go ahead and get rid of this dagger. And add it over to here. Pretty good, pretty good. Now, we're going to get into a little more detail here, because I need to look up Ganondorf some more. This is going to be a little more interesting. i got to go find his personality. Uh, okay. Now, ideals are going to be the most easiest. The easiest one here. His ideals are to become ruler, and also to become more powerful. I wish to gain power and no, what's it called? And status. Gain a great power. Great power and high status. All right, personality, personality, personality. Probably the only thing I'm not going to be able to find here is personality. It's a long, long list. It's a long list of games he's from. Oh, here we are. Personality. Portrayed as the incarnation of pure evil, greed, and power. Ruthless, cold, calculating. He's also shown to have an ego, believing that only he is worthy to rule the kingdom. And showing an arrogant sense of entitlement. There we are. That actually helps us with two of our traits here. It comes with personality and his flaw. I am the Incarnation of evil, greed, 
and unlimited power. I know No. No 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 no. Let's not go with that. Let's go with the I am the incarnation of evil, greed, and unlimited power. For the next personality traits I um ruthless and calculating calculate calculating there we are calculating let's go with that Now bonds. As a barbarian tribe's member, he's gonna have a bond with his tribe. My tribe. My people are my home. And the only ones who accept my goals, flaws, I am the only one worthy to rule this pathetic world. There is no man or monster more powerful than I. That sounds like a real flaw to me, don't you? And now as far as his spells go, Let's go ahead and go back to this page of spells. Uh oh. I got rid of the spell page. Uh, that's not good. Oh well. Um. You know what? Yeah, oh well. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll let you decide what spells to give him. Let's go ahead and get rid of this second, this third dagger here. He doesn't need that. Okay, there's our stats. There we are. Let's go ahead and go back to the top here so we can give Ganondorf his alignment. Hmm. Excuse me. Alright. Ganondorf is lawful evil. Let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. We'll all note this. What else? What else? What else? I think that's it. Yes, that is it. All right, that is it for Ganondorf, a dark elf warlock. That's as close as I'm able to get to Ganondorf, as far as a playable character goes. However, I have already made up Ganondorf as a fightable character. 
forgot to save it. Alright, here we are. This is Ganondorf, the Vile King. A Challenge 16 boss. I did my best to create a well enough Ganondorf character that actually fits in with a D&D setting. Let's go with that. Alright, so, Ganondorf the Vile King. He's a medium humanoid Gerudo. I made sure to input that. You know, technically he would be an elf of some sort, probably Drow. But I went with Gerudo to fit in with the lore. He's also lawful evil. He has an armor class of 18. Dark steel armor is what he is wearing. His hit points are 310. The dice that you use to calculate this would be 56d8. d8 because of the humanoid size. But you also add on 60 to this. To make it at uh, least calculable. Alright, his main stats are his 25 strength, 26 constitution and wisdom, 20 on dexterity and charisma, and 27 on his intelligence. I did my best to even it out a little bit. I'm probably a little too high, but I don't think it matters too much. Saving throws. Plus 3 on strength, plus 2 on constitution, plus 3 on charisma. His skills is deception plus 5, arcana plus 5, and history plus 4. I thought it made a little bit of sense. Alright, dark vision, 120 feet. Damage resistance, necrotic fire, force, poison, and acid. And he is also resistant to the bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical and non-silver weapons. Damage vulnerability, radiant damage because of the light arrow, and silver weapons because of something like a master sword, or the silver arrows, or the E4 sword as mentioned in the games. His languages are common, fey, and undercommon. You know what? Let's go ahead and give him one more. Let's go ahead and give him Abyssal. Just to, just to go with it. Challenge rating of 16. He has 15,000 experience points on him. His abilities, or features. We have the Brute. When Ganondorf hits with a melee weapon attack, the damage... The attack deals one extra die of the weapon's damage to the target. It made logical sense. Next we have magic resistance, and I forgot one important thing. Since this is a legendary character, he needs a legendary resistance. And now, if you do not know what Magic Resistance or Legendary Resistance is, for Magic Resistance, it basically gives the character an advantage against spells and magical abilities. For Legendary Resistance, say he fails on a saving throw. He can choose to succeed instead, but he has a limit of how many times he can use this. For Ganondorf, it is three times per day. Now, for his third, fourth ability, we got Innate Spellcasting. Innate Spellcasting is where you're able to cast a spell without using any material components. For Ganondorf, I gave him a few spells. At will, I gave him Burning Hands, Darkness, Fireball, Inflict Wounds, and Lightning Bolts. I guess it made a little bit of sense. Like I said, I didn't play any of the games, so I do not know what he actually does. I also gave him a powerful spell, the Chromatic Orb. This is for once per day only. It is a very powerful spell. If you want to look it up, I would suggest doing so. Now, his final ability here, his final feature, is one I made myself, and I think it actually fits. 
I had to do something with his Triforce. His Triforce of Power. Now, I didn't know too much about the Triforce, and I'm probably going to get heat for not actually portraying the Triforce of Power properly. But this is what I did for the Triforce of Power. Of the three times per re long rest, Ganondorf can use either his action or all three of his legendary actions to increase all damage he deals to foes by twice their original damage dice. So much like Brute, it'll give an extra damage dice, but instead it'll do twice as many damage dice. So say I did a 2d4 attack with Ganondorf. When Triforce of Power is active, it'll deal 4d4 instead. Which I thought would make sense for a power bonus. This bonus comes for the Brute feature, Fearer feature, and only lasts for three rounds, starting with Ganondorf's turn. So if Ganondorf were you to use his legendary action, the feature will start lasting at the start of his next turn. So basically like the beginning of the round or something like that. But if you would use it on his turn, that's when the round would start on that round. Starting with his turn would be one round. When it comes back to him, one round has been completed. Comes back to him again, two. One more time, three. And after his turn, it's gone. That is all for the Triforce of Power. Alright, now for his main attacks. These were a little trickier. Because I wanted to do something that would make sense for a boss. So I, for him, I gave multi-attack. Ganondorf can make two attacks with the same weapon. So say if I did a great sword, he'd use two great sword attacks. Or if he did long sword, two long sword attacks. I wanted to make it more simplified since some of these multi attacks people have been getting their um, homebrew characters, giving a multi attack that would do two of anything. Basically, like a dual wield feature. I thought that was too overpowered, so I did this instead. Now, however, if his hit points were 155, basically half or lower, he can make three melee attacks. So I can have him do a great sword, a long sword, and a trident, two great swords, a long sword, two long swords, a trident, basically a mixture of anything I wanted. Now for his attacks. We have the Great Sword, which does 3d6 slashing damage, plus an additional 3d6 necrotic damage. The Long Sword does 2d8 slashing with 2d12 fire. The Trident does 2d6 piercing with an additional 3d8 lightning. I wanted each of these attacks to be somewhat equal, so that the Dungeon Master doesn't focus on a certain attack style. He can go with whichever one he, want, he or she wants. Now for legendary action, we got Brute Full Strike. Ganondorf makes one melee weapon attack. If the attack hits, the Brute feature will deal two extra die of that weapon's damage instead of one extra to that target. The attack also deals an extra die of the weapon's bonus damage to that target. So say if I wanted to use the trident. It will deal 4 d6 piercing damage thanks to the brute ability. And it will also deal 4 d8 lightning damage. Now say if Triforce of Power was active. That would give lightning 46 to start with. Add on to Bruteful Strike. It's another 2. That's 6d6 piercing damage. And adding another damage dice to that additional damage. So 48 lightning damage. That would be one powerful trident attack. So you can become a pretty overpowered boss by doing this. 
Now, the only thing I have not done was the, uh, excuse me, uh, his other stats for the hits. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Now that I'm thinking about it. Alright, so... Melee weapon. Attack. Plus... Look at my book real quick. I gave him a 16 challenge rating. He's got a plus 9 to hit. Plus 9 to hit. Reach 5 feet. One target. Now hit. There we go. Now let's go ahead and shift. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I don't want to waste too much time here, so I can go ahead and copy this. Control V. Oops. I forgot to put H in reach. Control V. Fix reach again. There we are. Alright, so it's second one. His second legendary action is Counterspell. This will use two of his legendary actions. Ganondorf could use one of his spells. Which, as we went over before, is Burning Hands, Darkness, Fireball, Inflect Wounds, Lightning Bolts, or Chromatic Orb. Now his final one. Change form. If Ganondorf has less than 95 hit points and was hit by a melee weapon attack on the last turn, it's going to make this very complicated. That way it's harder to use. Ganondorf can use this action to turn himself into Ganon for Demon and regain hit points equal to his new, H his new hit point maximum. Ganon will not be able to use any actions or legendary actions for one round. So, if we wanted to do a good boss battle, this would be a way to do it. You have Ganondorf, and once he hits the 95 mark or lower, technically have to be lower, so about 90, and that player dealt damage using a melee weapon attack like a sword or something, maybe even a bow. Yeah. Ganondorf can turn into Ganon, which is what we're going over next. Ganon, the boar demon. This one's a little more condensed. Ganon, the boar demon, is a huge fiend of chaotic evil alignments. Excuse me. His armor class is 19. This is his natural armor. I kind of based this Ganon off of the one in Breath of the Wild, I believe. The one where he has that flaming mane. Wasn't exactly sure what to call that one, so I just went with Ganon, Ganon Boar Demon. His hit points are 400. This makes him a very powerful boss to face. That's 30 D12s plus 40. Strength at 30. Constitution 28. 
Intelligence 25, Dexterity 28, Wisdom 30, and Charisma 20. No, he's a giant pig. Who would want that? <laughs> that was a bad joke. I need to stop making those. Alright, damage immunities. He is immune to fire, necrotic, poison, and acid. Resistance. He is resistant to slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning from non-magical, non-silver weapons. He is vulnerable, however, to radiant and slashing, piercing, bludgeoning from silver weapons. Condition immunities. He is immune to being frightened, charmed, poisoned, stunned, or burned. He has dark vision for 120 feet. Language is common, infernal, abyssal, and fey. He's a challenge rating of 20, so he's a powerful boss. And we're giving him an innate spell casting again, just like the last one. Burning Hands, Darkness, Fireball, Inflect Wounds, Lightning Bolt, and Chromatic Orb. He also has the Brute feature again, along with Magic Resistance and Legendary Resistance. Now his attacks are different. We have Tusks. This is a melee weapon attack, plus 10 to hit. Reach, 10. One target, I have a little star right there, and you'll see why here in a minute. Hit is 4d6 plus 10 piercing or bludgeoning damage. The Dungeon Master can choose what it wants to deal. And you'll see why here in a second as well. And a target must make a DC 19 constitution saving throw or be knocked prone. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, doing my voice like this is hurting my throat. Now here's where the little asterisk thing comes in, you see? If there is another creature within 10 feet to either the left or right of the target, and bludgeoning damage is being dealt, the other creature also suffers the effects of this attack. So they will be dealt the 4d6 bludgeoning damage and have a chance of being knocked prone. Now his secondary attack is Demonic Fire. Recharge of 6. Now what that means is the Dungeon Master must roll a d6 or 6-sided die. Upon doing so, if that lands on a 6, I think that's why he has to roll. I think it's a d6. Yeah. If it rolls on a 6, that means that Demonic Fire can be used again after the first time. Now the attack itself. Ganon excels a fire excels fire in a 60 foot cone. So it'll be 60 foot long, 60 foot wide. Starting from Ganon. With let's see. Uh, each creature in that area must make a DC 19 dexterity saving throw, taking 63 or 18 D6 fire damage and 63 18 D6 necrotic damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. That is a lot of damage. Even if your dungeon master gets one on each of these rolls. That is still 36 damage. I don't know if there's anyone that's able to survive that. And if they manage to succeed, that's only 18. That's 18 damage. Who the heck has that much HP after getting hit by a couple of these tusk attacks? Or even after this. Because you have to get Ganondorf down to 95 HP in order for his change form to activate. Once change form activates, he becomes Ganon and regains every last ounce of hit points that you got rid of. Once that happens, you have to go through this all over again. You would have to have a pretty effective set of spells and restoration 
to be able to beat him a second time. Either that or you just flee. So this is a pretty overpowered boss. <laughs> I'm not sure why I didn't set it to a stronger challenge rating. But this is a pretty powerful boss nonetheless. Alright, so his legendary actions. We have Hellfire. Uses three actions. Ganon uses Demonic Fire as if Recharge was successful. That makes perfect sense. Rage of the Boar. Now this one's a little trickier to use. I think. You know, it's just more overpowered. Ganon uses two tusk attacks. Brute will deal two extra die of the weapon's damage to the target if the attack hits instead of one. Pretty powerful attack. Guess you forgot about that brute, didn't ya? Now for dark magic. Ganon uses a spell from his innate spellcasting list. Pretty good. And that, folks, was Ganon. Now, I don't have a picture this time, so hopefully I can get that into the thumbnail. I'm not connected to my internet as of right now. And my battery is low. Sheesh. My battery saver, too. What is going on with this thing? Anyway, that is all the time I have. If you liked this video, leave a comment down below. I will reply to you. And if you have a suggestion on what character I should convert next, leave it down below. I would love to see all the comments you all have. Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.